Hi, this is Michael Altos, and we're recording a section on GI system physiology. This is an assorted uh, different topics on the GI system, and we'll start with gastric emptying and aspiration of gastric contents. There is a lower esophageal, esophageal sphincter. It is at the gastroesophageal junction. It opens when you swallow and then closes to prevent reflux of gastric acid back into the esophagus. If the lower esophageal sphincter becomes weak or relaxed, we get gastroesophageal reflux disease. Chronic reflux into the pharynx and the larynx can actually lead to cough, bronchoconstriction, and even pneumonia. Under general anesthesia, the lower esophageal sphincter relaxes. This increases the risk of passive regurgitation of gastric contents up the esophagus and potentially into the airway. The risk increases if patients are supine or even in head down or lithotomy positions. Pregnant and obese patients are at increased risk for regurgitation. Obviously a full stomach, autonomic dysfunction as we see in diabetics, and the presence of a hiatal hernia. Here's a demonstration of a hiatal hernia. Normally the sphincter is right below the level of the diaphragm. In a hiatal hernia, part of the stomach has herniated above the diaphragm, and so the sphincter loses some of its integrity, and regurgitation is more common. There is also an upper esophageal sphincter. This prevents reflux of esophageal contents into the pharynx in conscious people. But as we decrease consciousness with sedating drugs, upper esophageal sphincter tone decreases. Residual neuromuscular blockade also decreases sphincter tone and increases risk of regurgitation and potential aspiration. If gastric contents are aspirated into the lungs, there's risk of pneumonitis, which is inflammation of the airways due to the acid, and the risk increases as pH drops or volume increases. If there's any solid particulate matter in the stomach, this could obstruct airways and lead to a foreign body irritation response. There are many, many risk factors for aspiration that I've listed here. Things that delay gastric emptying, which include diseases, traumas, opioids, ICP, prior surgeries and pregnancy. Things that make an incompetent lower esophageal sphincter that we've already discussed. Having a full stomach. Certain surgeries may lead to risk factors for aspiration. And then anesthetic factors. Just a reminder about the ASA fasting recommendations. The only thing that has two hours is clear liquids, four hours only for breast milk, six hours for formula, non-human milk, and light meals. And a light meal is usually described as something like toast and tea, but any fried or fatty food or large meal is at least eight hours. Next, the liver. The liver gets about 25 to 30% of cardiac output. Part of it comes from the hepatic artery, which is a branch of the aorta. Part of it comes from the portal vein, which are the veins that drain the intestinal veins. Then all of the blood flow goes to the hepatic vein, which then drains into the vena cava and returns to the heart. The liver has many functions. It removes toxins, viruses, bacterial toxins. It serves as a reservoir of blood volume. It's involved in metabolism of proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, biotransformation of toxins, drugs, and hormones, synthesis of plasma proteins and, cl and clotting factors. It combines ammonia with CO2 to form urea, and it creates and secretes bile. When we talk about LFTs, or liver function tests, we're looking at any test that measures synthetic function of the liver. This includes coagulation studies like PT and INR, since those coagulation factors are made in the liver, or an albumin level, since those proteins are made from the liver. Bilirubin tests also reflect liver function. Bilirubin comes from degradation of hemoglobin and myoglobin. And so bilirubin levels reflect the balance between production and excretion. Unconjugated bilirubin is formed in the periphery and then transported to the liver where it's conjugated. So when unconjugated bilirubin levels are elevated, this reflects prehepatic dysfunction, increased production or decreased hepatic uptake or conjunction. 
Conjugated or direct bilirubin is more water soluble in order to be eliminated. It can also cross the blood brain barrier. When this is elevated, it can reflect hepatic or post hepatic dysfunction. We see increased conjugated bilirubin in patients with hepatitis, certain drugs, alcohol abuse, cirrhosis, and biliary obstruction. A normal total bilirubin should be less than one milligram per deciliter. Patients become jaundiced, which means their skin or eyes develop a yellow color when total bilirubin is greater than three. Another liver function test are liver enzymes, ALT and AST, enzymes that are released into the bloodstream when hepatic cells are injured. Usually ALT is higher than AST, except in alcoholic hepatitis where AST is higher than ALT. Cirrhosis is a condition of hepatic necrosis and fibrosis due to liver disease. Patients with cirrhosis will have jaundice, portal hypertension, which leads to pressure, elevated pressures causing esophageal varices and GI bleeding, high cardiac output, fluid retention in the form of ascites, pleural effusion, and hepatorenal syndrome, coagulopathy, hepatic encephalopathy leading to coma, and in these patients, pharmacokinetics will be impaired. They have an increased volume of distribution, decreased plasma proteins, and decreased hepatic metabolism. How should we approach patients with liver disease when we provide anesthesia? This chart summarizes many of the effects of cirrhosis and some of the anesthetic considerations that go along with them. For the neurologic system, we worry about hepatic encephalopathy and patients who may have decreased anesthetic and analgesic requirements and may be unable to protect their airway due to decreased level of consciousness. In the cardiac system, Patients with cirrhosis may have portopulmonary hypertension and hyperdynamic circulation. They are at risk for right ventricular failure due to right-sided overload, cardiogenic shock, and vasodilatory shock. In the respiratory system, patients with cirrhosis may have hepatopulmonary syndrome and decreased FRC due to all the accumulation of ascites. And these patients may have hypoxia, hypoxemia which is refractory to oxygen therapy or PEEP. In the renal system, patients may have hepatorenal syndrome or hyponatremia. In these patients, it is important to maintain renal perfusion using caution when administering drugs that are eliminated by the kidney and avoiding nephrotoxic drugs. In the GI system, obviously the patients have liver disease, which causes portal hypertension varices and variceal bleeding in many parts of the body, including the esophagus, if you're placing a, a tube or any sort of probe down the esophagus, ascites, and malnutrition. These patients are at high risk for GI bleeding and full stomach precautions are often necessary. They have hypoalbuminemia, which may cause changes in drug binding and free drug levels. In the hematologic system, these patients may have coagulopathy, anemia, thrombocytopenia, or neutropenia, putting them at risk of hemorrhage, perhaps requiring vitamin K administration, and blood component transfusion as needed. Patients with cirrhosis have a compromised immune system and have increased risk for infection, necessitating extra attention to careful sterile technique. From an endocrine standpoint, patients with cirrhosis have decreased glucose production and storage, and decreased metabolism of insulin, putting them at risk for significant hypoglycemia. This slide refers to the child Pew scoring system to assess severity of liver disease. And a quick reference to the MELD score, which is used to classify patients' urgency and need for liver transplantation. The liver produces 600 milliliters per day of bile. Bile flows from the liver to the hepatic ducts and then to the gallbladder, to the common bile duct and then into the duodenum. And when we eat, the gallbladder contracts and releases bile also into the duodenum. Bile consists of electrolytes, bile salts, which are acids, cholesterol, and bilirubin. 
Bile salts are detergents. They bind to fats and fat-soluble vitamins and allow them to be better absorbed into the body. Bile also facilitates, facilitates excretion of wastes and toxins. Bilirubin, which we said is a degradation product of hemoglobin, is what gives bile its yellow-green color. Gallstones, also called cholelithiasis, is an accumulation of sludge in the gallbladder which can lead to formation of gallstones. Usually gallstones are asymptomatic unless the cystic duct becomes obstructed. This causes biliary colic, a steady right upper quadrant pain, often after a heavy meal and can last up to 12 hours. This is a common reason that people will have elective laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Cholidocolithiasis is when the stone blocks the bile duct. If the cystic duct is blocked by a stone, a patient can develop acute cholecystitis, inflammation and infection in the gallbladder. Right upper quadrant pain, tenderness, fever, chills, nausea, and vomiting are common signs. The Murphy sign is specific. If you palpate the right upper quadrant and push on there and ask the patient to take a deep breath, the pain will cause them to stop inspiring in the middle of the deep breath. These patients are at risk for perforation and infection, and they should be treated by hydration, analgesia, antibiotics, and then cholecystectomy should be done once they're stabilized. If the bile duct is blocked by a stone or a tumor or scarring, bacteria can ascend from the duodenum into the gallbladder, and this is called acute cholangitis, presenting with abdominal pain, jaundice, and fever or chills. This is an emergency and needs to be decompressed and remove that obstruction, either by ERCP, endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, where a scope is advanced and then up the bile duct, and then sphincterotomy to open this up, or surgical invention if ab intervention if absolutely necessary. That's our brief overview of GI physiology. Please contact me anytime with questions.